Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Brandon and today I want to talk to you about a method of local Windows privilege escalation. Now this method is going to deal with Windows services where a service is running as a high privilege user, but the binary that is being executed by the service is writable by a low privilege user. So right now I'm logged into our Windows 10 client. We had set this up in a previous video with a lab. I'll have a little card popping up now so you can go ahead and check that out if you haven't seen it already. Now, the first thing we want to do is get an idea of what services are actually running on the machine, right? So we can do this with WMIC, and this comes uh, standard on most Windows installations. So we'll do WMIC service get, and let's get the name, the start name, and the uh, path name. There we go. Now we're going to get a lot of output from this, but it's okay. Let's just scroll back up to the top so we can get the columns kind of sorted. So if we take a look at this, we can see the name of the service that's running, right? So every entry here is a is one single service. Now there is a lot of them running on this Windows box. So we have the name, for example, we have AJ router, we have the path name, which is the path to the actual binary or executable file that's being run with the service, right? So a service is really an easy way to start and stop the execution of an executable file. So here's the file that's actually being run when that service is started. And the start name here is the user that's actually running the actual service. So right here, we can see it's NT authority local system. Now it gets a little messy because of the line wrapping, just because of the resolution I have it set to. But you can see, you know, basically we have this service that's running uh, this binary and the binary is being run by this user. So this can be used for local privilege escalation. If we have, for example, a service that is running as, you know, uh, local system or as administrator and we as a low privilege user are actually able to write to this location where this binary is hosted right so if we have uh, this windows system 32 folder writable we could potentially just overwrite this executable right here and then once that service gets restarted our nt authority local uh, service is going to actually be looking for this file and this specific path and it's going to be executing that file. So we have a way that we can get some code execution on here, which will lead to privilege escalation. Now the key is finding a service that is running as a high privilege user that we can write to the location of the binary. Now by default, there's not gonna be a lot of these. And you can see there are a lot of entries here. I mean, there are probably hundreds in our example right here. Now I do have a service set up for us that we can practice on. So let's just take a look. Uh, let's try to find it here. Uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, here it is. So right at the bottom here, we have this Vuln service, right? So that's obviously one that I put in. And we can see that the uh, binary that's looking for is at c slash temp slash service dot exe. And this is being run as local system. Now, of course, we are going to have access, uh, right access to this temp directory here, because that's something that I created. But if you were going to be doing this by hand and looking through manually, it would be very difficult to do, of course. Now, there is a great tool that I will show that will do this automatically and perform these checks for us. But first, I want to go through and exploit this by hand. We'll do it manually first so we see how it works before we get into the automated tool for it. So right here, we're looking at the C slash temp directory. If we are able to write there and overwrite this service.exe, then we'll be able to get local system to execute whatever file is in this place once we restart this Vuln service, right? So let's just open up our file browser here. Let's go to the temp directory and let's see if we can add a new file in here. So let's just do a new text document. We'll call it test. And you can see we are able to write files here. So we can see we have write access here. You could also go into the permissions. Uh, let's see, we'll go back to C, right click on temp and go to properties, security. And you can see that everyone has full control. So all users are able to do whatever they want in this directory. So that should show that we are able to overwrite this service here. So you can see that this is the actual executable that is being run. Now let's go generate a payload that we can use to substitute in place here. So I'm going to jump right over to my Kali machine. So let's take a look here. Let me just uh, full screen this real quick and we'll just log right in. Awesome. So let's use MSF Venom, which is a tool from the Metasploit suite to generate a payload for this box. Now, let me just go up here. I have the command already written out. So let's see, we're going to use MSF Venom. 
the payload we're going to use is the windows add user payload so a lot of times people will go for reverse shells and things like that but it can be tough to catch a reverse shell in some situation and it can be a little bit of a pain so why not just add a new backdoor user so this windows uh, add user module is actually just going to add a new user to the box as a local administrator that we can log into afterwards so it makes it a little bit easier for us uh, if you know winrm or rdp were to be open so let's specify the username, which is going to be backdoor admin, and the password, which is please sub with an exclamation point. The format is going to be an exe, and we're going to save this as service.exe. So once we run this, it's going to generate our payload, and it's going to save it as service.exe. Now, the next thing that we're going to have to do is after this is finished generating, there we go. We can just transfer this to our Windows box and put it in the place of the service binary. So let's jump back over to our Windows 10 client. Now, I actually opened up, um, let's see, we opened up a web browser and we just went ahead and downloaded the service already. So that is already uh, downloaded as well. And actually this service that's in place here is actually our malicious one from our downloads folder. So I moved it from downloads once we downloaded it right over to our temp directory. So this uh, executable here is actually the malicious one already just to save a little bit of time for us. So now we can go ahead and let's open up the uh, services. Let's see, let's take a look there. And actually before we restart the service and run that malicious uh, executable, let's take a look at what users are on the box. So let's just do net users. You can see that the users here, we basically have administrator, conda, default account, guest, and this other one here. All right, so now let's go down to our services. Let's scroll down, let's look for our Voln service. And that is right here. You can see this is set to a manual start and running as local system. Now, again, since we had write access to the directory of where the binary for this service is located, we overwrote that binary with our malicious one. Now, I do want to say, if you're going to overwrite a real service, make sure to back the service up. So if, we're, if we go back to this temp directory, let's pretend that this service is the actual real one, right? So let's just copy and paste here. We have our copy. Let's say that this is our real service in production or in Hack the Box or whatever it may be, right? What you wanna do is rename this and just instead of being service.exe, we'll just change it to service.exe.back or for some other name, for example, right? Just so that we have a copy of the old executable and say in case something were to go wrong, now we can rename this one to service.exe, which would be our actual malicious payload. That way, in case we had to revert the service or anything for any reason, we actually have that backup. You don't want to just go ahead and delete these files, right? So now that we got that out of the way, let's go back to our Voln service. We can right click on this and click on start. Now you'll notice you'll probably get an error on this. It's going to say that Windows couldn't start the service because uh, the service didn't respond in a timely fashion. So you might get a little concerned here thinking that it didn't work. But keep in mind, what we just put in place of that executable was not a real service. So of course, it's not going to start, right? It was our malicious payload. So let's jump back into PowerShell. Let's do net users again. And you can see that we have our backdoor admin account. So now we have a local administrator account on this box. We could just go ahead and log in and we would have administrative access all from our low privileged user. So that is how we can do local Windows privilege escalation when we have write access to a service paths binary. Now there is an automated way to do this and I wanna show you because it is extremely useful and it can save you a lot of time. So let me just clear this right here. Let's open up a web browser and I actually have it open. It's a module called uh, power up and it's out of the power exploit post exploitation framework now it's under here in the privesk section and we have power up.ps1 now i already have this downloaded and let's take a look and this will be in let's see c slash users slash j smith that is our current user and the desktop take a look here i actually have this power up.ps1 already installed but this will get caught by Windows Defender and antivirus. So keep that in mind if you're working on a system that has that in place. Now, what we're gonna do is just import that module. So we'll do import dash module and then dot slash power up dot PS1. Awesome, that is now imported. Now we can just run the invoke all checks. Now that is a part of the power up module. That's gonna run a bunch of checks to check for pr local privilege escalation on this Windows box. So let's get that running. Now, this can take a little bit to run, uh, and it does perform a lot of different checks, not just for this writable service location that we have, but let's take a look at the output. 
So we can see that it found a few different ways that we could potentially do privilege escalation, but we're going to focus on the one that has to do with this Vuln service down here. So we can see it says modifiable service files, which is exactly what we discovered manually, right? Is that we had write access to the directory where that service file was, so we could overwrite it and restart the service and we got that to work. Now, the awesome thing about PowerUp is that it comes with an abuse function that will exploit the vulnerability that it found automatically. This is extremely useful and can save you a ton of time. But if you're going for the OSCP, be careful about using this because it definitely could be considered an auto exploit feature. And you don't want to go ahead and use something like that on the exam and get burnt if they disqualify you. So what we can do is, for example, uh, if we want to exploit this right here, we can run the exact command it shows. Now it gets cut off a little bit, but essentially we're gonna do this uh, install service binary and then dash name. And it's what's cut off there is uh, Voln service. So we can go ahead and type that out. Now we can see what it did is, let's see, it did service name, Voln service, right? Here's the path of the executable. Now the command it actually ran was net user john password one, two, three, bang slash add. So what it did is it added a new user named John with this password, and it added that new John user to the local administrators group. Now, if, let's see if we do a net users. Well, nothing there, right? And that would make sense because the service hasn't been restarted yet. So let's go ahead and restart this service again. Now we're most likely going to see it fail. That is okay. So let's go back and we'll do another net users. Awesome. And now we can see that the user John has been added. So that's just an automated way to do this. You can see using power up to enumerate this stuff is much faster because we wouldn't have to go through and look at all those different service paths by hand to see if they are writable. And it also has this automatic abuse function for you. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe down below. If you want to see some more Windows privilege escalation methods, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.